Hi. In this topic briefing, we want to take a look, an introduction to the important concept of corporate social responsibility, or as it's always abbreviated to CSR. Never write corporate social responsibility in an essay exam, always use the abbreviation CSR. And this concept of CSR, whilst it's been around for a long time, for, for well over a century, it's changed significantly in recent years as uh, stakeholders in a business have exerted much greater pressure on businesses. Uh, and businesses themselves have recognised that some of the issues and problems that arise from what they get up to uh, potentially threaten uh, their long-term prospects. As a result, CSR has become quite an important corporate objective for many organisations. So uh, it's more than just uh, an issue around social responsibility. CSR for many businesses is a core part of their business. But let's firstly explore what do we mean by it, uh, look at a couple of models. It's always worth looking at some of the theory, key models that you can use to support your analysis. And then finish off by looking at uh, some examples and, and potentially how CSR uh, gets examined. Essentially, a CSR goes to the heart of two questions. Firstly, why do businesses exist? What is business for? And secondly, what contribution, if any, should business make to society? And where you sit on the fence of CSR in terms of whether you view it as being a, a, an irrelevance or something that's very important or somewhere in between really depends on how you view the interdependence or the relationship between society. Because there's no doubt that, that society needs business but also business needs society. As society we need business to provide us with jobs, to pay those jobs, the wages and salaries, and other remuneration. We need business to invest and to innovate. And also, society needs business to pay its fair share of taxes so that, uh, that government spending can be supported on the things that society needs. But on the other hand, of course, business, there's no doubt that business needs us, needs society, it needs us as consumers to, to create demand in the market. It needs society to provide the essential public assets in infrastructure, for example, uh, health systems, transport systems, uh, legal systems, uh, to enable business to take place. So there's no doubt that business and society are interdependent. But I guess really the debate on CSR, the case against, the case for, really largely is determined by your view on whether business should take account of its broader social uh, obligations, responsibilities. And there are essentially two schools of thought. And this is, the, this is the way in which you compare and contrast. There is what's known as the free market view, uh, the shareholder value theory, which is basically leave business to get on with business and uh, let society take care of itself. And there's the alternative view, which is the social responsibility view, which is that actually interdependence of business to society is so important and so strong now that it can't be ignored. So let's just spend a few minutes just exploring this theory in a little bit more detail and then take a look at some examples. Let's start with the case against CSR, in other words the free market view and I guess the uh, uh, the guru of free market uh, thinkers no longer with us but uh, the guy behind this important shareholder value theory uh, is a guy called Milton Friedman. And uh, I'm a big fan of using quotes in essays and answers. And Friedman said very succinctly, the business of business is business. The business of business is business. It's a really easy quote to remember. And what uh, Friedman was really saying, and I've just quoted him further here, is that you should leave business to get on with what it knows best, which is doing business, making money, investing, innovating. And the only responsibility that business has to society is firstly to operate within the law and also within the ethical uh, custom of the country. Beyond that, business should not concern itself, uh, said, said Friedman, or proponents of shareholder value theory. Business should not concern itself with its broader social responsibilities. And you could support this line of analysis by perhaps quoting... Uh, the views of a very successful uh, businessman, the guy behind uh, GE, the big American uh, conglomerate. He said that, yeah, sure, every company should be a good citizen. But actually, before you can be a good citizen, you actually need to make money. You first have to make money before you can give it away. 
Now, so in, in, in essence, the case against CSR is really, as Freeman said, leave business to get on with business. It's not business's job to decide what society thinks is valuable. Uh, regulate business, prevent them from innovating, uh, Im impose all kinds of obligations on them in terms of social responsibilities. There's only one thing that that will do, which will increase business costs, which will eventually get passed on to consumers and to society in any event. Businesses should be left with getting on with their prime purpose, which is maximising profits and looking after the needs of shareholders, provided that they operate within the law and with the, the customs of the country in which they operate. That is the essence of the case against being obsessed with CSR. Now, what about the flip side? The arguments that say, no, the interdependence between business is so strong that actually businesses can't ignore their broader obligations, their broader responsibilities. In essence, CSR is about businesses recognising independence and doing more than is required of them by the legal system. If you like, it's the bridge between what society demands from the law and what increasingly society expects of its, its businesses. Uh, so moving, going beyond the bare minimum, being a good citizen, being part of society rather than simply being a, a supplier to society, if you like, of those jobs. Now, there are lots of different arguments for why CSR is a good thing for business to do. And of course, the trick in an exam is not to list out a whole series of them, but to identify maybe one or two if you're trying to build the case for CSR and explain how and why it's, it's a good thing from a business point of view. So, for example, CSR is often seen as being a way in which particularly large businesses and multinational businesses or uh, substantial brands, it's a way in which they can continue to support and build their reputation. And indeed, some brands, as we'll see in a few, few minutes, actually now base their business brand and image and reputation around their broader CSR activities. They see CSR as being a core part of their business. Uh, just looking down the list there, let's pick out, what about, what about the penultimate one there, that CSR can help increase employee motivation. And that, that must be a, that's pretty compelling, isn't it? That the employees will tend to want to work for organisations that play their part in the broader society rather than simply exist to make money. Um, lots of different arguments for CSR. A bit of theory to help you frame those, if you like, uh, coming up from a guy called Cotter. Uh, what he said was that he looked at all the CSR initiatives that, that businesses were engaged in and said, actually, there are lots of different ways in which you can, you can uh, deliver on your social obligations and your responsibilities. For example, you can make sure that you source raw materials and other, other, go other goods and services sustainably. In other words, you don't damage the, the environment in the long term. Uh, you can make sure that you market to your customers in a responsible way, um, that you don't uh, so you don't break any regulations around marketing, but you do so responsibly. For example, advertising to children, or responsible promotion of financial services. You can certainly make sure that you look after your responsibilities to employees, making sure that you pay them fairly, and that you provide strong, safe working conditions. You can do your bit for good causes and social causes, and in particular, you can reinvest profits in the societal infrastructure that helps sustain the business, in particular, education. So, so Cotter said there are lots of different ways of, of, of doing CSR that are good for the business. He summarised them in, the, in a way there that I just, I just uh, summarised on the slide there. So, I mean, you, you may have come across some of these. Uh, for example, community volunteering. It's the, quite a few, many organisations that provide time off for employees to go uh, spend some time in the community, perhaps providing their, their, their expertise uh, to, to community or societal projects. Uh, corporate philanthropy. Cash. <laughs> lots, of, lots of businesses, large and small, are prepared to put their hands in their pockets and provide cash donations and sponsorship as part of their CSR. 
And of course, we've seen increasingly larger brands, particularly consumer brands, uh, picking up on this concept of cause-related marketing. A uh, great example of that is, is the race for life with the, with the promotion and sponsorship from major supermarket chains is a great example of cause-related marketing. So Cotter and Lee said that you know, lots of different ways of doing it, and actually they identified some, some nice categories there, a bit of theory. And uh, clearly, there are lots of businesses now that are out there that believe that CSR is a fundamental part of their business. So we mentioned that CSR has become effectively a strategic objective rather than just a, a, a nice to do. A couple of great examples of that, in fact three of them coming up. Firstly, Marks & Spencers, who several years ago launched this CSR initiative called Plan A. And they call it Plan A because, in their view, there is no Plan B. That uh, Plan A is all about them becoming one of the most sustainable retailers in the world. In fact, they want to become the most sustainable retailer in the world. And Plan A, Plan a was and is a, a hugely complex and very successful project around sourcing sustainably, reducing uh, waste uh, within the business. A great example of sustainability as part of a CSR plan. Similarly, if you're looking for another great example of a, of a global brand, a multinational, who have a essentially made CSR a core part of what they do, look no further than Unilever. The CEO of Unilever is a guy called Paul Polman, and uh, he has uh, pinned his colours to the mass and said, no, there's no conflict here between making profits and acting in a, in a sustainable way. Actually, you'll increase your profits in the long term by adopting a very rigorous approach to CSR, in particular what he calls the Sustainable Living Plan, uh, throughout their global operations. And another great example is, is IKEA, or IKEA, as the people at IKEA call themselves. So uh, a corporate culture, a fascinating corporate culture, organisational culture based around this, this concept of frugality, low cost, but also phenomenal product innovation and customer service and a consistent culture everywhere you go but actually what underpins IKEA's business model is this commitment to to doing things better and in particular to providing a better what they describe as a better everyday life for the many and there are numerous initiatives uh, around sustainability and beyond educational programs and beyond uh, within the IKEA CSR plan. So IKEA, Unilever and Marks & Spencer's three great examples of businesses that have put CSR right at the heart of their corporate being, the key strategic objectives. But of course there are lots of other examples where you might question the, uh, the approach taken to a business's broader social responsibilities. I think the, the payday loans market is a terrific example. It's a market that's changing rapidly. It's now being more heavily regulated in the UK. And as a result, firms like uh, Wonga have seen a substantial reduction in their profitability. And indeed, many payday loans firms have now exited the market because of the, the regulation that's been put in place. Uh, but there are lots of examples of, of, uh, of, of where you could question the social responsibility of providing uh, high interest payday loans to people who, by and large, uh, can't afford them. And you don't have to look much beyond the retail sector. Uh, to see some other examples, uh, you may be an Abercrombie & Fitch uh, fan or customer, or you may have been previously, but, but no longer. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, increasingly teenage customers are abandoning uh, Abercrombie & Fitch is partly because fashions change and, and tastes change, but also because uh, uh, A&F have had some pretty poor publicity about how they treat uh, their employees and, uh, and customers. Uh, and uh, no doubt at all that's had a damaging effect on their brand. Similarly, um, significant issues arise where you've got complex supply chains around the world, and in particular the fast fashion retail chains have been caught out, haven't they, over recent years when it's been discovered that the working conditions in which uh, some of their uh, suppliers are providing to, to employees have been, have been less than satisfactory and of course the classic example of that is the, the factory collapse at, at Rana Plaza in Bangladesh and a uh, very unsafe factory, many many people killed and of course when they uh, discovered and investigated who was buying the clothes made at that factory they discovered that amongst them 
was uh, one of the UK's leading fast fashion retailers, Primark. And it raised all kinds of issues around whether Primark were uh, delivering on their broader social responsibilities, in this case, to protecting the health and well-being of employees at their suppliers uh, in Bangladesh. Now, there are lots of reasons uh, why increasingly firms are adopting CSR, but I just wanted to finish off in terms of evidence here, just with this, this chart that's from a recent report on uh, UK firms. And uh, the, essentially the, the CEO and the board were asked, you know, why? Why are you increasingly taking CSR seriously and in particular adopting a more sustainable business practices? And I think it's quite interesting, just linking back to shareholder value theory, because there's kind of an argument that says that you know, the business of business is business and business should be left alone to get on with the key activity, which is making profits and therefore paying tax on those profits back to society through tax. But actually, and this is interesting, that the main reason now why firms are adopting the principles of CSR, in particular sustainability, is because it lowers costs. And we know from listening to Paul Polman at Unilever, who, who absolutely believes in this, he doesn't think there is a conflict, no conflict whatsoever between maximising profits and operating sustainably because in the long term it reduces your costs. It's more than just the right thing to do. It's more than just building brand, which are all good reasons for adopting CSR. It's actually because it reduces costs and therefore increases operating profit margin and therefore improves the returns to shareholders. In other words, that chart is saying shareholders should be excited if their firm embraces CSR because it's going to be news for them. Interesting thought. Now, uh, the point about CSR is it's a very broad topic. It's very closely linked with business ethics. And of course, uh, you can bring it into answers and uh, essay, essay questions as a relevant line of analysis, even if the, the, the essay question or the topic isn't specifically about CSR. I've just listed here uh, some questions for you to have a think about. How would you go about approaching some of these, which are essentially around CSR? Um, the first one, do the activities of businesses need to be more regulated by the government? It's really basically saying, to what extent can we rely on businesses to act in society's interests? Should we leave them to get on with the business of business? Or does regulation have a role to play in enforcing, if you like, the interdependence between businesses and uh, society? That second one really goes back to that. Do you remember that chart about interdependence? The why society needs business and why business needs society. Well, which who needs each other more? Interesting question. A classic question around CSR. And also, don't forget, this is all also about stakeholders and shareholders. So Milton Friedman would say the business of business is business. It's shareholders who are who are the most important stakeholders in a business, and that's whom business should look after. Uh, Paul Polman. At Unilever, who buys into sustainability, would say, no, actually, shareholders benefit from a business taking a much broader view of their stakeholders, their customers, employees, suppliers, and beyond. And stakeholders, the broader stakeholder group, are much more important. And lastly, a linked question, is there a conflict between maximising profit and actually adopting a proper approach to CSR? Is there a conflict? Some interesting questions on there, all linked to CSR for you to, to have a think about. Um, be delighted to continue the conversation on social media. If you want to follow me on at tutor to you or myself and Graham and Rachel and Jamie and the increasing tutor to you business team on at tutor to you business, please follow us. If you guys are preparing for the AquaBuzz4 uh, essay papers, uh, don't forget to use the hashtag Buzz4. And this has been a, a a short topic briefing, an introduction, an overview of CSR. I hope you find it useful.